In light of the events happening in Gaza, I've decided to make another video about some books you can read to learn more about Palestine and the plight of the Palestinian people. I've already made a video on this and I have a whole playlist of books from Palestine, so the links to those are going to be in the description down below and they'll also come up at the end of this video and they might come up on top of the video at points throughout this video. So some of the books I'm going to be talking about today aren't precisely about Palestine and the plight of the Palestinian people, but it is about the history behind the plight of the Palestinian people and uh, works from activists that were pro-Palestine and mentioned Palestine in their works. One such book is Orientalism by Edward Said. Uh, you've probably heard of this book, a lot of people even outside of academic circles talk about this book. Uh, this book isn't necessarily about the plight of Palestinians and their current occupation, but it is about the colonial history, the colonial mindset that affects what is happening right now in Palestine. And it's also about, you know, the uh, effects of colonialism globally and also the mindset of colonized nations and colonizer nations. It is not the easiest work to get through, but I definitely recommend it. It's a very good entry point if you want to learn about colonialism, the effects of colonialism, the rhetoric about colonialism and how it affects how we think and proceed in the modern day. Next is The Hundred Years War on Palestine by Rashid Khalidi, which is a book basically entailing the effects of Zionism on Palestine, uh, how the British and then the Americans inflict this war on the Palestinian people in the name of supporting Zionism. It's a very academic in depth book and you know it's one that I think most people recommend as a book that is a must read if you want to learn more about the current plight of Palestinians and the history and the causes behind it. Thirdly is Palestine A 4,000 Year History by Noor Masalha, which is a book I'm actually currently reading at the moment. It is essentially about the history of Palestine and the area where modern day Palestine is going back 4,000 years. It is a very much more academic text based mostly in science. Some of the stuff thus far I've read I'm a bit uh, unsure on the messaging of. Um, it does very much talk to about how the history of Palestine and the area is being erased in favour of this almost biblical idea of the of the area which has very little scientific data behind it. Um, there are certain points being made which I, I don't know if I disagree with them or they're just a little bit going over my own head. So I'm only about a third of the way through the book, um, but thus far I would recommend it. I think the more so you go through the book, um, things that I spoke about earlier are referred to and expanded on, the further on you go into the book, so I think I'll probably understand certain points a bit more. But it's a very interesting uh, read about how this idea and history of the area of Palestine at the moment, that history and the even the science and the recorded data we have about the area is being erased in favour of this pro-Zionist uh, movement of a history to support uh, the Zionist cause. Uh, so I think it's a very, very interesting book and I've not quite finished it yet, but I think it would definitely be one I would recommend the most. Um, if I were to finish it. And finally, Freedom is a Constant Struggle by Angela Y. Davis. Again, this is one of those books which isn't entirely about Palestine, but it is about uh, the thoughts of a very pro-Palestinian activist, which is Angela Y. Davis, who, you know, she was a massive activist for the um, black rights movements, the civil rights movements in America, and also a massive activist for Palestine. Uh, Davis's book isn't obviously just about Palestine, but it is about um, the idea surrounding Palestine, about her support for Palestine, uh, why she thinks the Palestinian people are facing their current plight. It's a very, very great book. Anything by Angela Y. Davis, I basically recommend. Uh, so even if it's not just Freedom is a Constant Struggle, I think you should pick up any and all of her books. They are very good reads and she is like one of the most insightful and impactful people there are. So those are my four recommendations. Obviously me recommending you to read these books isn't going to magically change the situation that's happening in Gaza and the plight of the Palestinian people. So if you can, please, please 
find a way to support Palestinians and the people in Gaza, whether it be donating to charities such as you know Human Rights Watch or the even the UN charities, although obviously there are some pushback on those, even the likes of Amnesty International as well. It's kind of sometimes you're not exactly sure how to feel about them. If there is a local organization which you trust that will be able to provide aid directly to the people of Palestine and the people of Gaza, see if you can donate to them and help them. Uh, you can buy goods by people from Palestine. I have a book all about, uh, book. I have a video all about books where uh, some of the proceeds go to the people in Palestine. Uh, so maybe check that out or you know any other goods you can buy from Palestinians directly. I know in London there's a couple of places you can go to where they sell goods made by Palestinians and sold by Palestinians. So that can also be helpful. Uh, you know, continue to spread awareness, share um, whatever resources you can with people who you feel don't actually know too much about Palestine. I know there is the stigma against, oh, just posting stuff on your Instagram story, which is pro-Palestine and that's it. Obviously that isn't exactly all of it, but if you feel like you can use that as a way to start a conversation and to help people understand the plight of Palestinians, please do so. Uh, again, reading these books will maybe help enlighten you furthermore, but uh, again, reading the books isn't exactly going to change the situation. I just thought if you want to educate yourself more in the situation and maybe you want to be able to take what you learn from these books to go on to teach other people, maybe that will be helpful as well. But if you can find a way to support the people of Palestine, please, please, I implore you to do so. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to do my regular outro for this video, but I will put um, the links to the other videos and about books on Palestine in the description, and also they're going to come up at the end of this video now.